The last couple months of Fire Emblem Heroes have left me feeling like Intelligent Systems is no longer interested in cultivating a healthy, vibrant, competitive environment, and if anything, the game is moving backwards. Recent design decisions have pushed the average power level so high that strategy and gameplay feel less important than ever, and past investments feel less and less valuable. For the record, I am still enjoying playing Fae, and I won't rule out the possibility that I spend a little here and there in the future. But my current thoughts on the state of the game and conjecture about where it's heading have me worried that my enjoyment may not last too much longer, and the game itself might be nearing its final chapters. So what am I talking about? Well, I think everyone has noticed how the speed of power creep got turned up to 11 this year. Preferred weapons and exclusive skills stack 3, 4, 5 effects each. A far cry from the day one units who came with weapons as simple as a slaying effect, or desperation too. For a while, in 2020 especially, this felt to me like an advancing meta. New skills and units being introduced enriched the metagame and the interactions you could run into in PvP modes. Everything had an answer, but you had to choose very carefully which specific answers you had on hand in a given game mode and do your best to make up for what you were missing with careful planning and tricky strategy. In particular, there was a sort of rock-paper-scissors of B-skill effect that you generally had to choose one of. Damage reduction, null follow-up, and null counter disrupt. Each of these skills would shut down certain enemies, but get totally blown up by others if you were careless, and very few units could have more than one of these effects at a time. Now, on the other hand, I feel like the meta has actually started regressing, New units have so many effects that you don't have to make the same kind of hard choices in planning. And that also means there's less room to make up with actual gameplay. Instead of enriching PvP, this is creating a more restrictive competitive environment with fewer and fewer opportunities for creative, fresh ideas. Instead, we're getting more cover-all solutions. So why is this such a big problem? Well, let me explain with an example from another gacha game. Kingdom Hearts Unchained X... or... Key? Union Cross? Whatever this stupid game was called, was my first gacha. You summoned for medals, which were essentially cards. In the earliest meta, the most important effect was a general strength buff, and the first truly important medal was one that gave two stacks of that general strength buff. As the game went on, they rolled out more and easier access to various other buffs and debuffs, and eventually it became very easy to max out all of them. The cap was three stacks of each buff and debuff at the time. So then Square Enix had to raise the cap to seven to keep the game interesting, but it didn't take too long for that to be easily maxed out too. So where'd they go from there? They introduced a new buff called Upright Strength, and the very first medal that granted that buff gave two stacks of it. Sound familiar? If you assume that all the old buffs are givens, that means they'd recreated the very first meta I mentioned, just trading out general strength for upright strength. This is what I mean by a regressive metagame. It returned almost literally to an earlier state without really gaining anything for the journey. After these buffs ended up getting maxed out too, the final mechanic they introduced was medals that gave a raw numerical buff to the strength stat of all your medals. The meta devolved into literally just bigger number, and shortly after that, the game was shut down. Now, while Fae is a significantly more mechanically interesting, complex, and rewarding game, I'm afraid the same thing is happening here. As the Fae metagame continues to develop, more and more units are able to run some form of two or even three of the Null Counter Disrupt, Null Follow Up, and Damage Reduction Trinity I mentioned before. And just like maxing out buffs in KHUX, this actually leads us back towards essentially the day one meta of Fey. Think about it. If you assume that every viable unit has access to 40% damage reduction, NCD, and NFU all the time, doesn't it look a lot like 2017? Wary Fighter was the only real follow-up shenanigan skill of note then, there weren't skills that stopped enemy counterattacks, and that sort of damage reduction just means everyone will have a harder time one-rounding which was often the case in early Fae, as I recall. Basically, to quote a famous film, when everyone's super, no one will be. And at that point, it starts turning into a game of purely bigger number wins, which I think is a damn shame. But that's a very reductive way to look at skills in Heroes. Let's broaden the view. 
I would say that these are the effects that a tank wants in Fae. 1-2 range, null follow-up or other follow-up nonsense, damage reduction, guard, healing, null counter disrupt, cooldown acceleration, negation of units debuffs, and negation of foes buffs. That's 9 total effects. Back in 2020, Marita was considered one of the best units in the game for this role. Even Phoenix Master 1 said so. But even she had a hard time hitting more than half of these. She pretty easily gets NFU from her weapon, damage reduction from her B slot, and 1-2 range if she runs DC. But then the rest is hard. Maybe she can get guard with ruse support, or special acceleration from Brave Lucina, and healing from Mystic Boost as a seal or Noontime as a special. But all of these come with big drawbacks in terms of damage output and or positioning restrictions, which can make her weapon harder to activate. But this was part of what made the PvP modes in Fae so beautiful to me. Even the best units in the game had to juggle a lot of things and make these difficult calls about which effects you would have to do without. Maybe this is a controversial take, but I think that save skills were a way to expand the metagame by making armors more usable and introducing new counterplay as more and more oppressive units like Duo Leaf and Legendary Sigurd were added to Fey. Saviors were jarring to get used to at first and really shook things up, but fundamentally they helped shift the focus away from being almost completely on infantry units and also opened more build diversity by splitting tank responsibilities between two units. A ton of characters became newly viable as they no longer needed to be able to handle every matchup by themselves, and by not forcing distant counter or close counter in the A slot, many more characters were able to take tier 4 stances or unity skills or whatever else, so that they could check off an additional item on the desirable effect list. This did still come with the same sort of difficult decision making too. Armors that can run save skills had to do without the null follow-up and null counter disrupt options that were available to infantries, meaning that there was always counterplay against them by abusing those weaknesses. It also meant that choosing between double save, or single save and a non-armor unit, or no save skill at all, was a meaningful decision in the team planning phase. It might not have been the most exciting or deep change to the meta, but it did shake things up and progress things when the game was beginning to stagnate. But now Intelligent Systems went and released Ascended Fjorm, the single unit who I take as the best confirmation that we are now on a regressive path. As much as I like using her, she's a problem. Right out of the box, without any investment at all, she has built-in distant counter, half a null follow-up, damage reduction through ice mirror, which, by the way, cannot be stopped by deadeye effects, she has Guard from her stance skill, healing in her weapon, null counter disrupt in her weapon, and arguably cooldown acceleration through hardy fighter and her slaying effect. That's 7 out of 9 if I'm being generous. Everything but buff and debuff negation is at least somewhat covered. And a save skill on top of all that. It completely breaks the design philosophy that made the game feel deep before. Not only do you not have to choose between effects, at least not really in any meaningful way, she just covers too many, but you also don't have to make the same decisions about team composition. There is no longer a dichotomy between far save and infantry exclusive skills. Fjorm does both, for free, and she does them better than almost anyone. And as satisfying and fun as it is to use a unit this powerful for now, it doesn't signal a healthy trajectory for Faye going forward, at least not in my mind. It's not like save skills were remotely underpowered or falling out of style, and a unit who can do so much so easily, and again, completely ignores Flash, which I would say had been any savior's biggest weakness, just makes it feel like all other investment isn't worthwhile anymore. Whether that's resources spent on specific units, or more generally, time investment learning the ecosystem of the game. It's been barely half a year since save skills were introduced, bringing a whole new meta with them, and Fjorm's existence already completely rewrites that. So why should I spend my resources on anything else when this can happen so quickly? It feels like the beginning of an era where new units can actually do EVERYTHING, and the sort of decision making that once defined the game in my eyes is no longer relevant. And to be clear, the issue isn't really Fjorm herself. She does still have weaknesses in counterplay. 
The issue is that she completely shifts the metagame in a way that was completely unnecessary, and that doesn't just eclipse older similar units, but actually makes other unit classes and entire strategies on a broad scale irrelevant. The first armor unit with Null C was always going to be meta-defining, but she didn't need to come with half Null follow-up, Deadeye proof damage reduction, and the kitchen sink too. Saves were already arguably the strongest strategic archetype. The design philosophy that she represents is not one that is concerned with maintaining the precarious and beautiful diversity and balance that this game can embody. Maybe it's an overreaction, but if this is the new benchmark of power, I think Faye is heading toward a singularity. And that's, unfortunately, really boring. Just like KHUX's gameplay eventually reverted back to its early days, Faze will too, and fights will be decided by big numbers and color advantage, rather than actual strategy, positioning, and decision making. The fact that Ascended Fjorm's new gimmick, Ascended Assets, is literally just a way to add more numbers onto your units almost feels like a slap in the face in that context. So while I am still enjoying Heroes, I just don't see the value in investing money into it, or even really in investing resources into my old units at this point. I would love to be wrong about this, but as it stands right now, I'm just trying to enjoy what we have while it lasts, because I'm not sure how much time is left in the lifespan of Fire Emblem Heroes. So what do you think? Do you agree that Faye is regressing, or am I losing my golly gosh dang mind? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts, so please let me know down below. I put a lot of effort into this video, so a like and a subscribe to get with that comment are really the least you could do, right? If I can get some big numbers on YouTube, it'll advance the scripted video metagame of my channel, so I promise there's something in it for you too. And of course, a huge and special thank you to Wylia, Promise Me One Thing, and Fayology Joel, who all helped me out with this video. And of course, to you for watching!